here everybody comes and shares their experience about life, their connectivity to the society. But I am explaining about the crime. <laughs> Standing in the platform, I am explaining about the crime. So today I would like to speak about forensic science. Forensic science, it is an amalgamation of science and law. That is, we generate physical evidences to the criminal justice system. We provide the evidence to the legal fraternity. And as forensic science has many branches. Forensic psychology is one such branch of forensic science, which applies psychological knowledge for the legal issue in solving the legal issues. Today, the criminals are very intelligent. They are adopting state of art technology to commit the crime. They leave no evidences in the scene of crime. But the brain is storehouse of all the information. So we try to extract the physical evidences from the brain using detection of deception techniques called polygraph, brain mapping, and narcoanalysis techniques. Polygraph test, this test measures physiological reaction when the person tells lies. There will be a changes in the body which are, are not under the voluntary control of the individual. He is unable to control his pulse, unable to control his breath, unable to control his blood pressure, which are all involuntary in nature, unable to control the dilation of pupils. So all these are being recorded and it will show that the person is deceptive in nature and doesn't want to be truthful. Several courts have also accepted this polygraph as an evidence. Brain mapping technique. Brain has an extensive record of all the information related to a crime. The storehouse of brain is still not being understood. We know the computer's memory, but we doesn't know the memory of, your, of our brain. So it has an extensive record of all the information related to a crime or related to an event. Each information, each event has a specific neural network and it is stored in the central nervous system in the form of memory. When we try to recall what happened in our, we suddenly see a ch our childhood teacher. We start linking our memory to the teacher. And only that particular neural network get activated. It will not combine with what happened yesterday. So each event, each episode has a specific neural network with stamped information. When we try to recall certain information, we also try to recall where did this incident took place, who are the person associated, how many people were there, whether it was pleasant or unpleasant. Along with in emotions, we try to store the information in our brain. Because it is stored in the form of memory, it is very easy to recall. For example, if I tell you, solve the arithmetical problem. You use your logic and solve the problem. You do not recall who is the teacher who taught you. But when you try to recollect certain episode or an event, you recollect along with all these stamped informations. The very important aspect is a brain potential, a positive potential which arises within 300 milliseconds. Brain mapping measures the neural activity or neuron activity when the person processes the information related to the crime. So when he is processing the information, within 300 milliseconds, a positive wave appears in the brain that is called as a P300 wave, which uniquely, quickly identify whether a person is an innocent or he is involved in crime or he is a conspirator in crime. This is a sound treated room because uh, the brain is very sensitive. It can pick up any sound. So he has to be made to sit in a sound treated room. And this is how the electrodes will be placed. We're totally non-invasive in nature. The electrodes will be placed on the scalp of the individual using electrogel. And this is, you must have heard of EEG. Just like ECG to the heart, EEG is to the brain. In the running EEG, event related brain potentials are being measured. Uh, that is, you can see the peak on the other side of the graph that is P300. Before a person makes an attempt to conceal, for him to make an attempt to conceal, it takes about three seconds. But if the information is already there by means of participation in the crime, within 300 milliseconds, this wave gets generated. 
before he makes an attempt to conceal. So generation of this P300 waves indicates that the person has truthfully participated in the crime. And it has been peer reviewed and it has found to be 99.99% accurate. So this is also a case where a brother, elder brother has done younger brother to death. Went on saying I am innocent. But uh, suddenly, the moment he was made to sit and crime scene was started showing, the P300 wave started getting generated from all 32 regions of the brain, indicating that the person has truthfully participated in the crime. The two characteristics of uh, P300 is its amplitude and its latency. You can see the first wave that is generated within 100 milliseconds. When we see something, we try to focus our attention. That is the first wave. And within 100 milliseconds, we focus our attention. Then the brain starts scanning whether this information is present. That takes another 100, 100 milliseconds. So next, within, if the information is there, within 300 milliseconds, around 240 to 600 milliseconds, wave gets generated, indicating that he has definitely participated in the crime. He has stored this information in the brain by means of participation in the crime. The lying brain is more complicated than the truthful brain. So when a person tells lies, there will be deficiency in supply of oxygen to certain regions of the brain. So these red spots of fMRI indicates that the person was, has participated in the crime, but is not truthful. He was deceptive. And this is also a very important case. I would like to take two minutes for this. An excise commissioner was brought to us from Anti-Corruption Bureau. This excise commissioner was a perfectionist. He used to, for him to, he used to set a target, set a goal that each month he should collect certain bribe. If he is able to reach, he used to offer 2% to Sai Baba, 4% to Tirupati Venkatrama. <laughs> so he, because he was a perfectionist, he had maintained a book where he used to write everything. But unfortunately, one of the CBI team themselves leaked the information that there will be a ride. He had torn certain pages from the diary, and we wanted to know how much exactly he had collected. We started from 50 crores, nothing happened. 250 crores, there was sudden turbulence in the brain. And we went further, 500 crores, 600 crores. Now 250 crores is too less compared to today's financial uh, scams. But uh, that person had collected 250 crores and he had passed it on to a builder. And CBI was able to collect the entire amount and he was then convicted. <laughs> Narco analysis, it is a tool to aid the investigation from the uncooperative sources. So the terrorists especially, they keep saying whatever they feel like saying, they will never come out with the truth. So for such people, narco analysis will be very useful. It involves intravenous administration of a drug, anesthetic drug called pentothal sodium. This is an anesthesia drug, safe drug from the newborn till 90, 95 years old, for surgery purpose, this drug is being used. It doesn't even cause any secondary infections for the person. So when the drug is administered, person travels through various stages. When we monitor using a BIS monitor, when the BIS score shows 100, he keeps repeating whatever he feels like. When it keeps reducing, comes to 80, 80 to 70, he starts revealing how he did it, especially in the train blast case of Mumbai. The only one train blast case of Mumbai took place. Almost 453 people were dead. More than 800 people were injured. None of them were arrested. There was only one body which was unclimbed. And when when uh, CBI anti-terrorism squad people were able to arrest only one person because he was distributing sweets on the Mira Road. Just for distributing the sweets on the Mira Road, he was picked up and brought to us. From one person, we generated 13 people. This one person said how people from Pakistan had come, to, on which route they traveled to India, who was their logistic support in Mumbai, how did they assemble the, um, uh, this uh, weapon, where did they get from? 
and how did they place the bombs in the train which was a vehicle used to replace the bomb on the train and how did they trigger the bomb and why one body was unclimbed all this information was told by him and the case was solved all all six people were given hanged to death and the remaining were given the life imprisonment when this drug is administered intravenously person travels in first awakening state next trance state next sedative state and last stage is a I can't coma stage. I can't say coma stage. Unconscious stage where surgery is being performed. So there are so many videos. You can watch this because of the time. I am unable to do this. So Arushi murder case of Noida. We had subjected the parents. We had subjected even the servants for this test. And today Allahabad High Court has upheld that the parents are innocent. And it was known long time before. So serial train blast of Mumbai, Abhya sister murder case, stamp paper case of Telugu, and many around 8,000 cases have been subjected for narco analysis so far. Supreme Court, it has recognized the necessity and the requirement of this scientific investigation. Law Commission also emphasized the need for training in officers using these scientific methods of detection of deception. And it has revolutionized forensic science technologies that can be proved very fruitful in crime investigation. So this technique is very useful because it saves the time, it minimizes the trauma of investigative procedure, and it protects the fundamental right. Like she said, Article 20, Article 15, it will protect Article 20, Subrule 3, which says right to remain silent. In brain mapping technique, person need not have to speak anything. He need not have to touch any buttons. Just have to watch the photograph. Just listen the sentences or the words related to the crime. The brain activates and the activity of the brain is being recorded. So even it is totally non-invasive. Trauma of investigation procedure is also being controlled. So with this, I conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you.